things are there, but you don't really recognize them. And then, when you have the focus and try to concentrate, and they gain a little more presence. And that is how we call this. That means your perception is uh, becoming a certain awareness. And that is, is, it becomes opaque, it becomes that you feel that you have a perception in this mode. And so, uh, we could also call this the, the aesthetic mode, in the sense that this mode is able to tell you something about your perception. And then, when you played the minute just before, you gave, or we together gave, this minute a certain framework, a certain framing. That means we all knew what is going to happen and we all had a certain doubled presence. That means you were present in the very moment, but you were also present as being in the past. And this double presence that is what we can call a presentation. That means you presented to each other what you just did before. So it was a more dense present, presence than here because you were present in a double meaning or in a multiple meaning. There were a certain reality layers building on each other. There was this mere present, there was the presence of your perception and there was this reality layer of the play. And you can guess what now comes yeah. when you pretend to be something else. We could call this mode representation. And the interesting thing is going on here. So, when does your perception tell you about the framing it is working in currently? And when this is aware in your perception and when you are, um, when you are experiencing it, we could call this the artistic mode. That doesn't mean that doesn't necessarily mean that you, we have to do it uh, with an artwork or something. It's just that your perception is in the mode of multiple present reality layers. And whenever you enter this mode, it could be called artistic because you are standing with one foot in one reality and with the other foot in another one. And now we have the opportunity to apply that on our research question. So, as I said before, just for the others, people tend to ask, how can I look at art as if it was research. And my proposal is not to take the question this way because it's misleading. There is not the art that is transforming into something else that it's not art anymore but research. But it's the other way around. It's research. So that's the noun. And from time to time, it can become artistic. And that's the adjective. And now, you know what I mean with that. That when you undertake research, that means you are curious, you like to gain more knowledge, you like to formulate a question. You can do that in the artistic mode. And the artistic mode can be 
um, there from in a certain time or absent or present or less or more but whenever your perception um, is in the artistic mode and you are researching you could call this research artistic because it's um, done <coughs> within or with the artistic mode um, and so there is no problem anymore to uh, separate it from art because the question is not whether the outcome of that is art or not it's more the question of how you address your research questions yeah so um, and we can with this uh, uh, approach you can also answer other questions like um, where is the research place so you might think of an image like this, yeah? art on the one side, uh, science on the other, and the research uh, is all somehow belongs to science. Yeah? That's an, uh, an image for most uh, people that don't uh, really um, research themselves have in mind. Yeah? Or you have an image like the research is somehow embedded in the realm of science and then the art is there to help the scientists to communicate with the broader public. Yeah? And uh, uh, that is, a, of course, a, a very good endeavor, yeah? but I think the scientists would need then other people than artists or they shouldn't become artists, uh, but to be better communicators. Yeah? So uh, sometimes uh, this is also called public understanding of science and humanities. And so you have to push this button. Yeah? But I would like to push it out in terms of what is artistic research. And also where the knowledge comes from is important, of course. Yeah? Yeah? So the question, Julian, how your concept of artistic mode, can you elaborate a bit on that? Um, I mean, we have, we're, yeah, it, it's, it's, really, it's really crucial, but uh, we don't have much time. I can elaborate, yeah, but uh, then we, then yeah, I can, who can, can, can who yeah. come into an artistic mode? Everyone. You just did it. We, it you, you just did it before. It's a, it's a mode of our perception. And we undertake it. Yeah, but do you have to be an artist or not? No. And why, and why are you then using artistic? Because that is, that is a, a, in my eyes, a very big point. Because you, you use art and artist and artistic, not in the sense, let's say, you have to be an artist to formulate, in my eyes, questions about unraveling art processes. Yeah, but that's not my proposal. But My proposal is that everyone can formulate questions. For example, also scientists can do that. I don't and disagree. when you I don't disagree, but, but yeah. to the label it artistic. What what is artistic yes. in the artistic mode? Uh, the artistic in the artistic mode is the presence of multiple realities. And why do you use that, the word artistic for that? Because it's the best definition I can imagine. Um, it could be a human mode, for example? Yeah, it is very human. I mean, yes, humans tend to be Michael, artistic. Yeah. Yeah. To me, that is a very, very problematic step, because you use a concept of art and artistic and arts and artists to describe something that is actually not, that has, that has no need to be formulated as artistic. So what do you propose, creative, or what, what could you... Or, or human, human yeah. mode? Human. An animal will not be in the present and in the future. A, a human disposition, dis disposition. Yes. Yes. So why do you label something with the use of a concept that has nothing to do with it? That's, that's my question. Because I believe in that it has a lot to do with that. Um, there is another text on the research catalog um, that explains that a little bit further and, and deeper. I mean, I would take another half an hour to explain it for now. But um, uh, in my point of view, the question of, of whether something is art or not is a question of the perceptive mode you are looking at it. And so uh, it's not 
It's not the artist that <coughs> makes the art. It's your perception that gives you a certain worldview on the things that you are looking at. And that could be an artistic mode or an aesthetic mode or anything else. Yeah? But um, whenever you are aware of the fact that you yourself are in certain framings with your perception, then I would call this mode the artistic mode because that's what we uh, what we use normally um, in encountering art and and having artistic experiences and uh, the role of the artist in uh, in all this is to produce opportunities and uh, to provoke the artistic mode in the audience. Mm. Huh? How about the aesthetic? The aesthetic mode. There you don't need the framing. The aesthetic mode is that your perception becomes present uh, um, without necessarily being in a frame. Uh, that you, you could also say um, this is the mode of the perception that and this is the mode of the perception how. That means how something looks, how something sounds, how something tastes. This is the aesthetic mode. Yeah. But they all merge also in, I suggested, reflective as a, as, as a word here at some point. And there is a certain yes, reflection going on through all these actions. <coughs> and again, they are not separated categories. Yeah? They are like colors in a spectrum. So of course, here are um, uh, thresholds. And, and there, there, there are, um, how do you say, übergänge, I don't know. Transitions, yeah, transitions. Yeah? transitions. Um, so, and there is one uh, dimension that is driving this transition, um, and uh, this is the redundancy. So, when you start here and go there, then the redundancy increases. That means you have to know more to go there in this direction, yeah knowledge is increased uh, about the things that happen and about the things that you experience in your perception. Uh, clearly here, yeah, in the representation, there you have to know the code of the representation. So here we are in the realm of semantics. You have signs here. Yeah? So we could this also call the semantic mode. That that's also the mode where the art starts being formed as the no, art product. No, the art starts here. Um, you can also leave the artistic mode some, somewhere here. Yeah? I mean, there are, they are overlapping, of course. Yeah? Uh, they are not separated. But you could also use semantic without the artistic mode. Yeah? Then you are like here. So you don't need to be an artist to do artistic research? No. So you, you don't, don't need to be a medical doctor to do medical research. So everyone can claim whatever. Is that? You don't need to be a philosopher to do philosophical research. No, you have to be a researcher to undertake research. Yeah, but yeah? If I'm a philosophical researcher, I do not claim to do, let's say, medical research. Or I hope for humanity, I will not be allowed to do it. Yeah, but there are lots of scientists that do artistic uh, modes of research. Exactly. That yeah. is my question is that exactly why do you use me? You claim, say, the knowledge generated, let's say, the unique view of someone who is doing it, like a philosopher to do, a medical doctor is, <coughs> is, is operating. Yeah? Yeah. So that, that knowledge, in my eyes, that is fundamental for every professor, every background. So now yeah, but has a knowledge that cannot be shaped by someone else who is not doing it, like other professors. So, in yep. my eyes, the perspective of the artist is exactly what makes the difference between artistic research and philosophical research about art. Yeah, but um, your example of the medical doctor is, uh, is quite telling because, of course, you need skills to do that. Yeah? If, if you don't have them, then you won't come out uh, with, with new knowledge. But. Uh, how do you get those skills? That's another question. You can be trained as an artist. You can also be trained uh, uh, as a chemist, let's say, and then um, do uh, uh, 
research in the natural sciences, and you also can employ the artistic mode, of course. Yeah, it, it might be not that important than in other cases, but when it's there, um, you also have it in your toolbox as, um, as an opportunity, as a research tool. Okay. It seems to me that the perspective of the one who does research is a fundamental uh, tool to make a difference. If I, I understand a that, yeah? but I disagree. Yeah. But how can you disagree? Because again, once again, how can a medical doctor do artistic research? Because you said <coughs> you don't need to be an artist to do artistic research. I don't talk about artistic mode, but you said artistic research can be done by non artists. Yes. So, so why not replace artistic research than by philosophical research? Because, as I said before, uh, this is the quality, this is how to qualify the research. Yeah. And when, it, when you replace that with another adjective, you have other criteria that come into account. So then when you say philosophical research, then you have to, uh, uh, you have to, to, to meet other criteria than when you say, I like to qualify that or that at, as artistic. So then, then my next question would be, what is then exactly artistic? to make something the research artistic. How do we make research artistic? That, that was I about to explain. So it is when uh, when whenever in the research as a process, it might be in the beginning or on the way or in the product or in the communication about the research questions or the outcomes. Whenever the artistic mode is employed then um, I mean the, the the shift is not to qualify it as a whole but as a dynamic system like the perception is dynamic that means um, you can enter the mo artistic mode and you can leave it and it's, it's only a question then how long does it last how important is it how present is it in the very moment you are analyzing uh, there might be research that produces art and you never enter the artistic mode throughout the process. But that's no categorical problem then anymore because you can uh, definitely say, um, um, yeah, you can uh, differentiate between um, the, the phases um, you are describing. And that's the advantage of taking this as an adjective as a quality and not as a, as a substance. So it's a modal <laughs> qualification. Say I, I agree with you. Yeah. How would you then describe the phenomenon of research from the artist's perspective? Because you can't use artistic research any longer because you use it in the way you do it. I yeah. agree. Okay. okay. How would you describe then the research conducted by artists from the artist's perspective. Yeah. So no one else can do it. Like yeah. A medical doctor, you need it to be, I hope so, if I go to the hospital, and they will not be treated by a philosopher. Yeah. So there are di different possibilities, of course, for an artist to undertake research. Yeah. When, uh, for example, you can uh, research about art making and uh, theorize about uh, what, what art does, yeah? but then we could also call this art theory. Um, you could also, like, uh, uh, like I explained before, use the artistic mode for yourself as a, um, as a uh, research tool um, to be in that mode and to, um, to formulate questions in that mode. So you could also do artistic research uh, by, by yourself. And you could also do research using the artistic mode of other persons to investigate, for example, how this mode is employed and what this does 
uh, with the perception of, of other persons. Yeah. And uh, that would be that would mean that um, yeah, uh, you ask questions about the artistic mode. For example, you observe others while they encounter um, artistically some samples that you provide or you provoke them to enter the artistic mode and you observe their behavior or make an, uh, 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 make an interview afterwards um, asking what they experienced, something like that. Yeah? Then you are not yourself in the artistic mode but you use the artistic mode of the others to address certain questions, please. <coughs> Just uh, thinking about time, because uh, yeah. I will present uh, next after you. Yeah. And um, I think uh, if, if uh, the time should fit, uh, maybe it could be a good transition. To, yeah, to please. To have you as a, because exactly where you uh, are in this. Yeah. Talk. You could think take over. Really okay. Uh, then I interrupt here. And then you can could, uh, spend a few minutes if you have some. Uh, yeah, no, it's around. okay. It's okay. I mean, um, you could go back to the research catalog and look it up. Yeah? Just search by my name and you will find the text. And you can take over then. Is there a panel talk after this? I mean, some talk is afterwards. We, we could. Does it fit your yeah. talk? If you're uh, staying, that'd be great. I, I, I'm yeah. chairing yeah. 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 this session, so I, I just jumped in because the first speaker uh, didn't come. Yeah? So no, I no, hand no. over to you, and perhaps you can uh, then continue this discussion after yeah. your presentation. Well, I think it's in the, in the very... Uh, okay. Thank you. It's not so far. Yeah. Yeah.